I thought that was going to be my last question, but you did bring up R. Kelly, and I got to ask this. Precedence does matter. And when we see, even though that was a different situation, different case, when we see what ultimately happened with him, he's going to be serving about 30 years in jail. He's, he's in the midst of serving about 30 years in jail. How much, if at all, does that play a role in the likelihood of a mountain of, uh, of legal matters just coming down on him like a tsunami in light of what happened with R. Kelly? It plays a big role, I think, in terms of how people are responding, those billionaires, those buddies of his that used to party with him. I think folks are making sure they keep their distance because of what did happen with R. Kelly. Folks used to come to the defense, or a lot of people came to the defense of R. Kelly, mm. uh, and only to find themselves on the wrong side of that story, the wrong side of history. See, we've had this evolution in this country around sexual assault. Fifteen years ago, if, you know, representing women, and I've represented a lot of women in sexual harassment, sexual assault claims, the women were shamed, uh, they were often humiliated, they would often lose their jobs, their reputation, their positions, and the man was always believed. Now, not always, but more often than okay. not, the man mm. would be, uh, you know, the, the somehow come out the hero. Mm. And Me Too, we've had a whole paradigm shift. I mean, it's a shift in the way these cases are treated, mm -hmm. the way women are treated, and no longer is it the case that powerful men are given the benefit of the doubt. Uh, we are now willing and ready to hold them accountable. What specifically shifted the paradigm? Is there anything, any incident that stands out in your mind that changed the course of history to the standpoint that we, we the, you know, what we're living in right now where things have changed so drastically and favorably, I might add, because this needed to happen. Oh, the pendulum needed to swing, right? It was, it was, uh, it was horrible, absolutely positively horrible, uh, what would happen to women. I, I think social media had a lot to do with it. Women being willing to come forward and tell their story. You know, there's something uh, powerful and there's strength in numbers. So you get one woman telling her story. You know, it's easy to dismiss one person. You get a multiple number of people. You can even dismiss them. But look at Bill Cosby, a case like that. There were tens of dozens of women that came forward and had a story uh, about Bill Cosby drugging them, sexually assaulting them. It's hard to dismiss that many people. That's kind of what's happening now to P. Diddy. Uh, Cassie Venturis uh, lawsuit, we thought that was it. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, it just opened the floodgates It for did, others. because she, saw she filed the lawsuit. The next day it was settled, settled. but it didn't stop other allegations no. from coming down the pipe within a matter of days. And people get emboldened. Now, some people say, and one of uh, Sean's lawyers is a good friend of mine, uh, you know, some folks say it just creates a money grab. Folks who are out there just trying to grab money and, you know, uh, take advantage of this opportunity. I don't discount that. There are false allegations that are made, no doubt about it, but overwhelmingly, women who come forward and make these kinds of allegations, they know what they're going to face. Mm -hmm. They know the challenges going against someone as powerful as P. Diddy or you know, Jeffrey Epstein. So this is no cakewalk. This is not easy. This is mm -hmm. not for the faint of heart. So mm -hmm. if you are courageous enough to tell this story, my belief is you're probably telling the truth.